This is a continuation for video 475, which I published about 10 months ago. And in that video, I showed how I designed and built this board, which serves as the backbone of my automated programming and test jig. It's basically the brains running the show. So two minutes of background story to remind you what this is all about. A while ago, I started making and selling these modules on Tindy. This is the Volt link and it's a reliable high-speed USB to serial converter because I personally use this kind of tool almost every day in my line of work. So I wanted something that can work reliably and have a few basic features done right. And I get these manufactured at one of the big PCB assembly suppliers in China. And I have them made in this arrangement, a panel of six modules, because it kind of makes sense from a uh, DFM and financial point of view. And after receiving one of these panels, what I have to do is to manually plug a USB Type-C cable into each one of these six boards. Then I have to run this uh, special software supplied by the manufacturer of the USB to serial converter chip, which is Silicon Labs. And that uh, software actually writes specific settings to the USB to serial chip. This takes on average 30 seconds per each module if I'm really efficient, sometimes more, something like a minute because, well, I'm not a robot and I have inherent delays. It is a very tedious task and prone to error. I could, for example, accidentally skip one of the modules if I wasn't focusing and keeping track of which ones I have already flashed. So it was definitely time for a change. I wanted something that does this faster in an automated way. So I started by uh, building the, the board presented in Volo 475, which is basically a seven port USB hub interface to a Raspberry Pi capable of talking to each one of those USB ports and running various programs locally. Now, luckily the manufacturer Scilabs uh, also provides some Linux compatible binaries, which can basically talk to their chips and perform the same operations that I was performing from the Windows GUI tool. And I was able to test those binaries and I had all working very nicely, the Raspberry Pi being capable of talking to all six boards connected via USB cables in, uh, in the previous video, Volog 475. But in order to make a proper automated test system, I still needed a test jig where I could just put the entire six module panel and it, it, it would connect the modules without me actually having to plug in a USB cable into each one of the ports. Well, luckily, I met some nice people from a German company, which is called Eloprint, and they specialize exactly in building automated test jigs. And if we have a look at their website, eloprint.com, we notice they have been doing this for a while. They have as customers some of the important names in the industry and they already have a few standard models of test jigs, but can also build very custom ones if you need it. I've met a few people from their team at Embedded World in Nuremberg, so I can highly recommend sending them an inquiry. They're pretty nice people, so they will respond to your request. So all I had to do was to modify my design of the panel to include the required test points, in my case, on the back of the PCB. And then I send these guys all of my design files like Gerber's or Step 3D models and information about how I wanted my uh, wiring and, and connections to look like so they can design that into the test jig. They can also integrate other nice stuff into the test jig. They can do things like uh, buttons, switches, displays, LEDs, you name it. These guys can integrate it into the test jig. In my case, I just asked them to integrate a couple of LEDs, two buttons, and one of those tiny I2C OLED screens. Then, based on the number of connections that I needed, I opted for a DB25 and DB9 connectors on the back to bring all of my connections into like a single connection point. One really interesting thing uh, they can integrate, I, rem I remember discussing this with their engineers, they have the ability to integrate fiber optics into the test jig so that when you have LEDs on your board and you have the test jig closed, you can't really see the LEDs on each individual board. So they can put in fiber optics to bring that light to the, the front panel for a visual confirmation of the test running and the LEDs turning on, 
or they can also embed optical sensors to allow your software to check for LEDs functioning correctly during the test. And I think that feature is awesome for just for people building more advanced systems. So from the moment I sent them all of my details, the design files and how I want my wiring done, I think it took them roughly a month to design and build my custom test jig. And since this involves several manual steps, um, it's a pretty custom build. I did expect, you know, some things to maybe not look as professional, but boy, was I impressed when I unboxed this thing. It, it's a beauty and it looks as professional as you can imagine. Uh, the details are just perfect. And the first thing you'll notice is the quality of the 3D printed parts. I don't know what material they use for this. I don't know which technology they use to 3D print this, but this looks very slick with this matte black texture and the print quality is top notch. This is this must be uh, the best 3D best looking 3D printed part that I have ever seen. Just look at how nice the overall design is. And I would have expected, you know, to have maybe just a simple square box here holding um, everything inside. But no, it's elegantly designed with these corners and edges. It, it just blew my mind that it looks so good. So once you've placed your uh, PCB panel in, you slide the top part using the yellow handle and it actually has some form of detent when you reach the bottom and it actually locks in place. Perfect connection with those pogo pins, nothing is moving around, everything just sits perfectly and the springs do their job man maintaining a good electrical connection with your PCB. Then on the back of the test jig, I have my DB25 and DB9 connectors as per my request. But like I mentioned, these can be anything of your choice. It just happened that for the number of connections I had, these made sense. And I also had spare DB9 and DB25 connectors in stock. So I didn't have to purchase anything extra for building the wiring. And in my case, the brains, the electronics board is external, but that could also very well be internal. If you designed it that way, they can totally custom customize that for you. So upon receiving the test jig, all I had to do is to build this uh, custom wiring harness uh, to connect from the DB9 and the DB25 to this uh, JST connector, which I have on my board. And of course, my custom wiring harness doesn't look professional at all. I mean, you can clearly tell which part of this uh, system uh, has been built by me and what comes from Eloprint. I then spent some time building a custom piece of code that would run everything on my Raspberry Pi. I went for Python and uh, this code would enable a few GPIOs to control the LEDs and to read the switches and then it would just flash the boards when it, it detects a press on switch one. But there are a thousand ways you can design and build this whole setup. Another popular idea is just to put a limit switch embedded into the test jig itself so that when you lower the platform, it detects that and it automatically triggers the sequence uh, when the gantry is closed. That is all up to you and up to your imagination and how far you want to go in optimizing things in your setup. But with all things connected, with my new script running the show automatically, I went from a best case scenario of 30 seconds on the manual test, but usually one minute per module. So I'm going to say an average of four to five minutes per an entire panel of six boards. That went down to just five seconds per the entire panel. And let's make that 20 seconds uh, complete with inserting and removing the panel from the test jig which makes using the test jig about 15 times faster than the original manual method. And if that 15x saving wasn't enough, the benefits don't stop there because now I have practically 0% error rate, the test jig never lies, and I've also implemented a very basic logging mechanism where my Python script will log its actions to a local log file complete with timestamps and serial numbers for each individual module tested. 
again a thousand ways this can be implemented you can have a speaker play a sound you can flash a big red warning led whatever you consider is needed you can have the logs be remotely uploaded to a web server you can show stuff on the built-in oled screen so the operator doesn't need to use a computer like i was showing in the screen capture it all depends on how much time you're willing to invest to fine-tune the solution in my case this is good enough I don't need to check every pin on each module because the design itself is pretty simple so so the likelihood of something bad happening in the PCB assembly process and one of the GPIOs not working is pretty low next to nothing I've built thousands of these uh, panels so far and I've had exactly zero failures so for me it's not worth investing more time and resources making the test more complicated because if all six modules enumerate over USB and they are all programmed successfully it already means that the power supply circuit is functional the USB connections are functional the chip itself responds and allows programming so it's a good balance in my opinion of how much effort you put into the test versus how much uh, you gain but this will of course vary for a different product and if you've made it this far into the video let me give you a quick preview let's call this a quick teardown of the test jig so we can check out the internal wiring because I can easily remove this bottom plate uh, just to give you a quick overview of how the internal wiring is done and wow this matches the build quality of the whole unit I mean its wiring is as clean as you would expect uh, these tiny ones look like maybe they're 30 or 32 AWG Teflon coated wires and you can of course specify a different wire to be used depending on your specific needs they just uh, match these based on the specs that I requested but just look at the details look at how nicely these tiny wires are, are soldered to each individual pogo pin this was actually my first test jig attempt and the success of this project is mostly attributed to the collaboration with Eloprint because on my own this thing would have been more difficult to design without having any experience and it wouldn't have turned out so professional and it probably would have required several iterations on my part just to end up with an inferior result pricing will depend a lot on your specific project and the various details that you might need implemented I highly recommend you send Eloprint an email to start a discussion about your test jig but I think it's fair to expect pricing only makes sense for people that are really building stuff in volume where it really makes sense to have a test jig to ensure the highest level of quality and to save money from all of the hours uh, spent when manually testing or flashing your boards I have already used this test jig to test and flash over a thousand volting modules I'm really happy with how it works and now I'm happy that I've acquired the skills required to to implement such test jigs for my professional work for my customers of course by continuing the collaboration with Eloprint not on my own I would also be interested in hearing your feedback in the comments below Tell me what you think about the quality of this test jig. Have you designed or built your own test jigs? Or if you hired someone else to do it, were they looking as professional as this one? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, thank you for watching.